August, I got a very intriguing email. An invitation for an interview for potentially becoming a TEDx UF speaker 2019. And I thought, TEDx? Talk about my work? But there is a link in here. What if this email is trying to fish me? <laughs> no, I will not click. What if this domain, TEDxUF.com, is, is a scam? But it's TEDx. What a great opportunity to talk about the work I'm so passionate about. What can I do? Well, I did some research on the sender, Laura Uribe, online, and chatted with her over the phone. And only after that, I was comfortable to click on the link and set up a meeting time with her. Have you noticed the amount of energy, time, and effort that I put into processing one email from Laura, I did that because I'm a phishing researcher. What is phishing? Phishing is social engineering in the cyber world. And social engineering is as old as time. It's the ability to influence someone into performing an action. In fact, we are social engineered more often than we think. All of you guys here, for example, with kids at home, you are social engineered almost every day. The problem is, when we are influenced via deceptive arguments, and the action goes against our best interests. So let's go back to the concept of phishing. Phishing are malicious messages distributed by all types of online communication media, email, SMS, social media, WhatsApp, which attempt to influence an internet user into an action or a change of opinion that we go against the user's or even society's best interests and will benefit the adversary. And these actions can be clicking on a malicious link, opening a malicious attachment, or reading fake information. And the consequences can be installation of malicious software in the user's device, theft of users' credentials and pers personal information, and manipulation of users' opinions. And phishing can have catastrophic implications. For example, uh, the cost of ransomware, a type of malware that's usually distributed by phishing, will reach $11 billion this year. And most of the breaches in nation states involve phishing. A notorious case was that of John Podesta, the chairman of Hillary Clinton presidential campaign in early 2016. Podesta got an email that asked him to enter his credentials into a fake Gmail page. The attack was successful and resulted in volumes of sensitive emails involving Clinton being released to the public. And still today, Many people believe that this breach had a significant influence in the results of the U.S. presidential election of 2016. And this was not an isolated case. Emmanuel Macron's campaign in France was also targeted by phishing. And last year, Microsoft reported Russians attempting to infiltrate DNC offices via phishing. And in the Brazilian presidential campaign of 2018, WhatsApp was heavily used to spread misinformation. Why does this happen? We are all susceptible to phishing, because phishing tricks the way our brain makes decisions. Our brain makes thousands of decisions per minute, most of them unconsciously. And to handle this huge volume of, of tasks, our brain uses shortcuts to make quick, good decisions without consuming too much brain power. And this mode of operation was described in Daniel Kahneman's seminal work on decision-making, which led to his Nobel Prize in economics. According to his theory, there are two systems that drive the way we think, system one and system two. System one is fast, intuitive, impulsive, emotional, uses heuristics, automatic, little effort. We use system one when we are deciding which seat, to take in a waiting room. System two is slower, consumes more brain energy, is more deliberative, more logical. We use system two when we are deciding which college to attend or which house to buy. 
Most of the time, these two systems operate in harmony, but system one can sometimes make grave mistakes, especially when tricked by an adversary, because of its use of heuristics, which consequently contribute to our susceptibility to phishing. For example, authority. People tend to comply with requests made by figures of authority. Scarcity. Opportunities seem more valuable to us when their availability is limited. Reciprocation. When people give you a gift or do you a favor, you feel in debt. My collaborator, Professor Natalie Ebner from the Department of Psychology at the UF and I, conducted a behavioral-based study on phishing susceptibility, comparing young and older adults. In our study, our participants received, without their knowledge, and over a period of 21 days, phishing emails counterbalanced according to a particular principle of influence. And we found that phishing susceptibility varies according to age, gender, levels of emotion, and cognition. In our study, 43% of our participants click at least once in one link from our phishing emails, and 12% clicked more than once. Younger users were more susceptible to scarcity, while older users to reciprocation, and both age groups highly susceptible to authority. And we found that older adults, especially older women, were the most susceptible group. And we also discover that, in general, for the group of older adults, the higher the levels of cognitive functioning, the higher the resilience to phishing. And this is very problematic for older adults, because research shows that as we age, our levels of cognitive functioning and our sensitivity to deception declines. Think that this doesn't affect you? Just consider the number of older adults in positions of power in law, finance, and politics. I will not lie to you. I have some pieces of not-so-great news to share with you. The first one is that there is no perfect technology to filter out phishing. Email providers do a great job filtering large volumes of phishing and spam from our inboxes using machine learning. But these techniques can only filter what they learned or saw before. Think about it. A cat will always be a cat. But a phishing message can change every day. And new fish can still sneak into your inbox. And it takes one click into a malicious link to harm a user or a corporation. Training helps, but system one can still lead to poor decision making. Many companies offer phishing training for their employees, but research shows that employees forget the training after some time, later falling for the same type of fish, meaning that they were operating under system one when attacked. And some phishing guidelines actually do a disservice to you. I will leave you with this. First, there is no way to completely eliminate the threat of phishing for the same reason that we can never eliminate deception from the physical world. We as human beings, deception is part of our making, and phishing is just deception in cyberspace. But the good news is that we, researchers, are working really hard to develop tools to help your decision-making while you are navigating online communications. And you can also try to use some shortcuts to help trigger your system, too. For example, does the email have a link or attachment? Do I know the sender? Is the email trying to influence me? For example, a threat? An offer too good to be true? Playing with my emotions? My willingness to help others? Anti-phishing interventions should not try to change the human. Evolution has hardwired us to operate like we do, system one, system two, and we are not going to change that fast. An anti-phishing technology should not come in a one-size-fits-all, because different demographics will have different susceptibilities, as our studies show. For example, the way parents warn their eight-year-old about the dangers of the world 
is completely different from the way they warn their 15-year-olds. And humans, it's not your fault. And despite online communications having opened up a new avenue for deception, it revolutionized our lives. We can reconnect with childhood friends via social media. We can participate in the lives of our family members, even if they are far away from us via WhatsApp or live streaming. We can be more effective at work and school with email. And we, as a society, found our microphones in Twitter. Good or bad? I don't know. Maybe in 100 years, people say, this is crazy. But this is the world we are living in the 21st century. Thank you. <laughs>